good evening, everyone. My job is to talk about the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to be leading you into seven special anointings that God wants to release here now. But you see, Christianity has, the cross has two sides. One side is the sufferings of Jesus. The other side has to do with our own suffering along with him. One side deals with receiving the benefits of his own suffering. The other side deals with taking your own cross to follow him. What has spoiled the modern church is that they are only taught one side. We are taught about his sacrifice and what we can benefit from it. So our Christian life is built only on what God can do for us. We are not taught to follow in his example. And you see it everywhere in the Bible. To also carry our own cross. Which will result in massive salvation for others. We actually think that there are more benefits in collecting what he died for. No. There are more benefits when you also die like him. The benefits of Christianity, about 20 to 25 percent is in Christ's suffering. 75 percent is when you identify with him in your own suffering. With your own suffering. Before you sit down, I need to make it clear. So, in Christianity, you have general grace. Then you have uncommon grace. The general grace are those things that are free. The common grace. And the only reason they are even free is because Jesus paid for them. So salvation is free. Healing is free. And so on and so forth. Baptism of the Holy Spirit is free. Forgiveness is free. But now you have the uncommon grace. None of them is free. So sometimes when you listen to, you hear messages where they talk about paying a price for something. They are discussing the articles in that side are on common grace. An example is when you hear pay a price for the anointing. They are on common grace. They are not available in the free market. And that's where 75% to 80% of kingdom resources are. And that's why majority of people who fill our churches are not assessing those things but they read them in the Bible. Because any of God's uncommon grace requires sacrifice. Let's look at what you get. The three things you get after Jesus died. You get salvation. You get forgiveness of your sin. And so on. Now, you, you don't have to go to he hell. You can go to heaven. But what did Jesus get? Who made the sacrifice? You can't get those things. You can only get them when you make your own sacrifice. If I want to list 36 different things he got, there is none of them you can touch until you have burnt your own sacrifice. Is it that he was now highly exalted? Where is your own promotion? Is it that he's now made king of kings? Where is your own? Is it the level of authority that he carries now? There is a scripture that listed at least seven of the things that were that accrued to him after he made that sacrifice. That's why you read all the apostles of Christ and all the people that followed him, the biblical Christians, early church, all of them were sacrificial individuals. There is a new and modern Christianity that we have sold to the church. And that's why people are against things like giving. They think you're a good pastor until you talk about giving. My job is not giving. 
So there is a good man, a young man that came to Jesus. And why Jesus preached the Ten Commandments? He said, I want to be saved. What should I do to have eternal life? Jesus asked him about the Ten Commandments. And he said he has obeyed all of them. He has been obeying it from his, young, from his youth. Until Jesus told him to do giving. He got offended and left. That's what some people do. Oh, I, I've never seen a man of God like this. Talk about giving. That rich man got offended and left. And it's because of him, that message, that it is very hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. It's easier to pass through the eye of a needle, a camel, to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man. He was preaching because of that man the moment he walked away. What is the problem? It's not that God has riches. Abraham, all the men that are quoting for you, they were all wealthy. All of them. David, Solomon, all of them. And they're all in heaven. Of course, heaven is named, a, a part is named Abraham's bosom. So what is it? God is not against riches. God gives riches. But the issue is that the man thought he was the one that had the money. He didn't know he was the money that had him. There are levels you cannot break through in God without sacrifice. There are things that ordinary skill. You know, we have personal bats. They have one of the few professors in his family, professors in Nigeria that did aeronautic, they, they studied all the way to space, work with NASA. The man is in the village drinking pan wine, broke. I know one that I had to dash money. He has three, three different degrees and one PhD. He has three different masters and one PhD. What did Jesus get? Who made the sacrifice? Revelation chapter 5 verse 11. All the angels in heaven now worships this man. And they stood round about the throne and the beast and the elders and the number of them were 10,000 times 10,000. And look at what they said in verse 12. Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the lamb. He's no favor. He is worthy. He paid to get here. Worthy is the lamb. Look at the things he receives. The reward of his suffering. Number one is power. Number two is riches. Number three is wisdom. When Solomon gave that sacrifice that people, when they convert it in, 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 in financial values, just a few of them, it runs into millions, multiply millions of dollars. Solomon ended up with wisdom and one of these articles called honor. Just two. Just two. Jesus ended up with all of them. He ended up with wisdom. He ended up with strength or might. He ended up with honor. He ended up with glory. He ended up with blessings. And it's not all. Oh, I can take you to other scriptures. You see other things. So, it's like I made a sacrifice and now my reward includes economic power, political power, intellectual power and all that. Then you come to my gate to get free handouts. And everybody, maybe once in a month or during Sarah or during Christmas or Easter, I come out and give some handout. You collect that. And you keep collecting that. That's what, where a lot of believers are living the common grace, the manna that falls from heaven. That Moses that had enough anointing to create food from heaven. What about getting that thing he has? Why do you want to be 
collecting one apple. Why don't you have the three? Why should they be giving you handouts? Now, for things like salvation, we couldn't do anything about it. We couldn't have paid. Thank God that he did that for us. Romans chapter 8, where God said, we are heirs of God and joint heirs. Verse 16. First of all, he said, the Spirit of God bears witness. Romans chapter 8. The Spirit of God bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. When you give your life to Christ, this starts. Then verse 17. If children, then heirs, and heirs of God, and join heir with Christ. And whenever we preach it, we tell everybody, you are joined heir with Christ. Shout hallelujah. Everybody will shout. Where is your own riches? Where is your own wisdom? Where is your own power? Everything he has belongs to you. Amen. Amen. There are no free gifts. That's why the scripture there said there is a condition. And that condition, so far we suffer with him, so that what will happen? We may also reign with him. You have to carry your own cross. It costs something to advance God's kingdom. If not for this message, Domino City will still be in one uncompleted building somewhere in Enugu. And actually, actually, probably we will struggle and struggle and finally build one church. And that's where Pastor David will have died. You wouldn't have met me. Nobody. Because there is no man of God who breaks into higher realms in the spirit who didn't get there by sacrifice. You see this one? That's why. Check. There are hundreds of thousands of pastors. It's a handful. You can count them on double of your fingers that are actually operating on common grace. Go meet any one of them. Sacrifice is what I did ministry seven years until I took poison to drink. I went to chemistry lab and took hydrogen cyanide. It, now, Nsuka is introducing, UNN is introducing a type of electricity generated from sewage. That place that, I call, that all the sewage from that university goes to, that's where I went to drink it. There are pastors suffering. I'm doing pastors conferences across the country. I was there. That's why I'm doing a lot for ministers. After seven years, and my father disowned me for answering the call because I rejected my uncle was a, a, a big guy in NMPC and I studied industrial chemistry. I was a part chartered. So I could, I did my industrial attachment there. So he created a part for me and I went to answer the call. And now this is how it's ended. This is the message that rescued me. It doesn't come by crying. If you like, sing from now till Jesus return. When you sing, go, there is a, a type of anointing that comes from that because every seed decides its harvest. If you plant mango, you are not going to get guava. So worship, if it goes up, the blessing, the, the and presence, presence of God comes. No, financial breakthrough can't come. Political dominion cannot come. Sacrifice. Tonight, I want to talk about uncommon grace, certain anointing. There are seven of them. God came into camp meeting this year to release it on you. That's why I said you have made my job easier. What was he teaching our church in Enugu in an uncompleted building? Passing the money test. And I came in and sat down. When I finished hearing it, I saw the key to all I have is if I have done fasting now, done all sorts of.
I realize what he, the host has been trying to tell us. I don't know whether it's because he was a fellow in Nigeria. His papa, I saw what he did for him, but why the thing didn't enter? When he finishes, I will go back and drop normal offering. And there were pastors like me. They would drop that. There were others making sacrifices. Bishop Oyedepo was in the north. He comes in there. He closes his account. Even when Papa died, we all went for his burial. It was Bishop Oyedepo that took most of the lion's share of everything that happened. We watched him from a pastor that used to have one pocket at his back. He used to wear this trouser like fella. He broke into the maker, whatever that he is. I watched that. I watched a number of like seven men. I watched this happen before my eyes. But you know, I'll tell myself, ah, uh, you know, it was your message. Not even in the house that cracked this one for me. He preached it, but I don't know what it was with my ear then. I don't know whether it's because you came from South Africa that made it work for me. First, it was the only card that I had. I dropped that one. Then, of course, because of course they're trying to get us out of that uncompleted building to get us our own property and this pcj was the one that built the first domino city church this is it i have never built a church but i gave in all of them and you can ask him the type of giving i'm not talking about so at that time my first experience there to to buy their first land and do. And so they finish all that. All the faith. That means, you know, the first thing sacrifice does, it kills you. There is a hole that mammon possession has on human being. It frees you from it because you can't rise with it. And even if you have a lot of money, you, that money will send you to hell. That's why a lot of rich people can't enter. So you have to pass the Abraham's test. Where all your life you've been giving God Ishmael and God now says, Isaac, that thing that you love, I have never thought who will, who will convince me to do that. I thought I was the one that need money. You know, let me, let me be very honest. I had one opportunity to meet Papa Idahosa. I actually wanted to ask him for money. When I got there, I, 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 when, when the talk started, I didn't know how to say exactly what was inside me. So he heard I was working among students and all that. He said, David, I wish you and I can exchange. I said, Lord, I wish it can happen. You have all these mighty men, millionaires in your And you say you wish. I said, why will he be talking? I said, Papa, why will you say that kind of thing? You are the ultimate in Africa. You say you don't understand. I was a child born, thrown away at dustbin because my father rejected me. I was too sick with a lot of things. They threw me away to die. He was actually thrown away. I still alive. He said, you don't want he threw him away. His mother was the one that refused. Ran, took him and ran over to the in-laws place. And amazingly that child survived. He said, I knew poverty. It was or a robot that taught me giving. And I said, but now look at you at your level. I need some money from this man. So he said, I am leading people going to the grave. He, he talks in rhymes. In the house, if you listen to him, I don't know where those things come out from inside him. He said, I'm leading those going to the tomb. But you are leading those coming from the womb. He's speaking prophetic things over me. I brought a small offering, but what I actually came to do is to ask for money. That our ministry were in complete, you know, sir, Papa. Or just give me one of these, your American connection. That's what I came. I'm leading those going to the tomb. People that are not aging and about to die. You are leading those coming from the womb. That's what he said. He said, I'm in charge of yesterday. You are in charge of tomorrow. That's why I wish we can exchange. Uh, I listened to that. Uh, it made me feel good small, but I said, this tomorrow.
he told me how a robust teaching helped him. He started showing out of that poverty and all that. That's how God moved him. Do you know what he did finally? He now entered into covenant with God and said, God, what you ask for people to give is 10%. But I read the New Testament and saw that New Testament teaches still worship. And still worship means that you own everything. I'm just a manager. So he said, I'm going to reverse it. You take 90. Let me live on 10. Are you guys hearing now? Are you people hearing? A Benin boy that was thrown away to die. So sick. Became the greatest African preacher that rose, laid hands on more than seven American presidents, traveled to over 125 countries, shook nations, built over 900 schools, built universities, when it was not possible. First man to build a 30,000 seater church, fused it outside field. That's when Pentecostal used to be mushroom. They call them mushroom churches. You come in, it's a store with three benches. People sit there and be clapping. We have all these things you have seen that is happening in the church is the house that broke it how did he do it so he was trying to explain it to me show show me how to fish my ear was not in that i wanted him to when he finished this and give me just give me a check five million i will be fine so he finished he said kneel down I said, Lord, should I shout and tell him, am I going to go? Should I say something? Talk to him, please, now. Let him know the state of things. Then you came. Ah. And, you know, I, I first canceled, paid the one that I could, and then finally I was able to pay because I closed my account. That's the first time I am closing my own account. Later, we even did it with Dominion City account. Because he ain't knew how much did the church have. The secretary I had, the salary was 3,000. Sometimes we're owing it. 3,000 a month. Can I, I can call the name of the person. A graduate, 3,000. We can pay it. My house... The parlor was church office. Flats. Three bedroom apartment. Parlor was church office. There's one room inside. That's where I live. The other room is Pastor Ben and seven other people. That's the state of things. There was no way this ministry was going if this message did not come to me. When I now realize that there are are treasures this side and that is those are the things i've been looking for all my life but they are not free you don't get them because you fasted or you you prayed and now suddenly checking my bible go do a, a, a run through your bible everywhere sacrifice 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 everywhere you turn it's just something in our head that blocked our ear. If redemption could have been accomplished by any other means, which God allow his son to die, there are some things that cannot be broken without sacrifice. You've been praying about them years ago. If pray, Lord, all oh God will say, Elijah, Samuel, you prophet, start praying, fasting, and then it will be accomplished. What happened? God lost the whole human family because Adam aligned with Satan and sold off. How do you get it back? Same prophets upon prophet, it did not work. But there are people that have suffered losses. How do you bounce back? If you are Noah, you read about Noah today. You had a flood. We don't have very okay. We have in Lagos, place a few places in Nigeria where flood come. Everything is destroyed. Your houses, your farm, your animals. But God found a way to save your life. You come out of the ark. We the first thing you do be giving. No, you'll be looking for somebody to give you something. 
to show you pity. But these men are taught how to reverse every form of misfortune. That's what I did. And then that's how I broke that realm and came up. And I was so happy that this could happen. I said, why didn't somebody explain all these things to me? And the Holy Spirit said, you'll be hearing it, just your ear or not. At least I go to Benin Church of God Mission Convention every year. I go, sit with the house. And I love him. I love the ministers. He will bring in a couple and bring or a robot, bring all this great, and I will enjoy the host. And once they start getting to that giving, yeah, you know, Papa, this is just one thing. I wish you can just leave this side. This is the man. That God used to rescue me. You can argue all you like. When you are tired of the situations, you sit down and read your Bible all over again. You've seen the benefits. Of course, there's even one that makes it 12 which has to do with the presence of God. Before Elijah can get that fire to fall, there has to be sacrifice on the altar. When Solomon finished building the temple, at the dedication of the temple, he offered 120,000 cows. He offered to, to... When they finished calculating what one man gave in one service, how many million on that day? Solomon, you know, nobody thinks about Solomon as somebody very spiritual. Because he has women problem. But that Solomon spread his hand like this. Fire came. The same thing that happened with Elijah. Because he made the condition. God is no respecter of persons. And for those watching around the world. You love what you are getting from Dominion City. You love it. Probably now we have raised this topic. You might get offended. If you want to be offended. Get offended with God. Don't get offended with me. Get offended with your Bible. Go and read it. You are not reading it. Doesn't matter who you have chosen. Itching ear people teaching you on the internet, on social media. It will not change nothing. It won't change nothing. A man with theory cannot argue with a man with results. I carry seven anointings on my life. All of them, I broke into them with sacrifice. I can tell you, the one about crusades, when we wanted to start filling stadium, I had now received this teaching. Rehoboken now came back to my city. He came some years ago. Of course, I didn't give now. Now he came again to the city of Enugu. I was living there. Opera Square. And this time, you may be seated. Just sit down for a few minutes. Because what I'm talking about will happen to you in just a few minutes now. It's the last night. Tomorrow morning is communion and committing. So you need to get it. God brought you here to rewrite your story. The Habonke came to my city. Now, it wasn't like before. Last time I came like those who came to collect money, free things. This time around, I have gotten this revelation. And I want this anointing to break cities, to break nations. So this time he came. He brought suits, distributing free suit to pastors. God told me, don't touch it. This is how you people are. That's why Africa is where it is. Those suits, some people sacrifice in America and other nations to come and do it. Now he brought free books. I saw pastors fighting. Even books for new believers, some carted away with cartons. There is even a friend of mine. I go to, I once in a while, he's an evangelist. I went to his office a year after. See some of those books still in the office. He didn't distribute them. Like how, what do you do after you are saved? And some other things about the Holy Spirit. He cutted, pastors were fighting. Because Bunker will hold fire conferences in the morning, the crusades in the evening. 
And I was learning. God said, go there to learn. And then you are going to sacrifice. I said, Bunke's ministry is very big. He said, no. Say you want the kind of thing he carries. I said, yes, sir. He said, sacrifice to help him reach other cities, just like he has reached you. People sacrificed for him to come here. Someone like Copeland gave him $1 million for some of those meetings and will give aircraft to help transport things. Now watch, watch each of his crusades. One crusade costs $1 million. You know, it's easy to come and sit here and receive free things. You don't know what it takes. Each crusade costs one million dollars and he does 12 minimum every year. He said, be part of the next one. <laughs> I checked. We don't have any serious thing to contribute to. So he said, close the church account. I closed it, carried the whole money. One of my dickens said, you are mad. I said, mad, this uncompleted building. We are already dead. If this giving is what will kill us, let's die here. Because there is nothing happening here. This place and I'm talking about stadiums. I don't have the anointing for that yet. And those anointing are not on the free market. If not, every minister will have been doing it. So I carried it in and went to meet him. First of all, I commanded our equipment boys. We had a few then. One is dead, dead now, Abba. You know, but uh, we had the jazz master, the one I called the jazz monster. And two other guys. I told them, you go to the field. The crusade was seven days. And his men are there. You sleep in other square with them. You help. You walk. When other people go, don't go. Stay there. Help this man to help set up. Help. They need diesel for their gent. You go serve them and while you are doing it you are learning how to power a gospel crusade because we are going to be doing this and don't take a cobble if they need food go and buy them food some of them are white people and be learning from them be humble and be asking them questions then me i went to the source because one of the things again about giving he gives you access others in the house i did how will he even look at a useless I don't want to say useless boy pastoring in one uncompleted building. But it's because I brought small seed though. He opens the door immediately. So, when they, they had, somebody wants to give her book, I said, he said, he's a pastor. He told them, let him come in. He said, what is your name? I told him. He said, why are you here? He said, I came to give you something. I want to be part of the next crusade. I wish I can be part of every one of them. But this is what we have now and is the whole account of our church. You can tell our church is very small. He's, he even tried to suggest visiting. I said, no, sir, you can't even, you're too big for, I can't even invite him because I'll be too ashamed. So the man said to me, I'm shocked. This is not how your people, Nigerians, are. And most of you from Africa. This is not how you are. They are only takers. They take, they take, and they keep taking. And they think that's how they will attain greatness. And year after year, when I finish, I come back. They are still where they are. He said, I don't know who taught you this. He actually told me it's the first time he's meeting a pastor. Here, coming to say, I nailed down. That's how he prayed. I passed out there. I didn't even remember the, the remaining, but I heard the initial things he was saying. But that was it. When I got up there, I knew that something has come upon me. I went back to that church on Sunday. I looked. I was now bigger than this church. When I'm preaching, I look. I'm seeing multitudes. I'm seeing the sick cripples walking. And I told our people to get ready. Let's just give ourselves two years. We'll be heading to the stadium. Of course, June of that year, we went to the indoor sports stadium. The place got jammed. Things happened so much. June of the next year, we returned to the indoor sports stadium. It, it triggered a series of things. I remember when we returned, the stadium could not take, so we went in the open. There, you know, stadium have that open part. Not the pitch yet, though. 
Where we are supposed to be going is the pitch, the member. But we have not, you know, I'm just testing this thing. It's a new gift, impartation, just to be sure, you know, that my faith could. So we went into the open. Because the indoor couldn't take us anymore. And I made mistake because June is rainy season. And when we came, Satan decided that is the day. And this rain was falling. Our speakers were getting messed up. I, I had a Bible they put on it. The Bible was getting soaked. I was getting soaked. Then I, I turned to the Lord. I said, what is going on? He said, go up there and preach. Look at people that have come to hear the gospel and be healed. Go up there and preach. So I walked to the stage. I thought by the time I walked, rain will stop. So I walked to the stage and stood there and tried to open the Bible. Rain was shocking. It was better when it was the hard cover. You know, I covered it again. So I said, Lord, uh, what is happening? You know, you tell people, do be praying, but they don't know the preacher is in big trouble. I told the people to be praying and so that they, they won't be watching. And I said, Lord, what, what is going on now? This is not what we agreed, though. So he said to me, I gave you authority. I have ability. But it is authority that commands ability. That's why I said, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. So he said, what you see, you think is a disadvantage, it's the first miracle of the crusade. So if you exercise your authority, then I will release my ability. But if you stay here and be asking questions, you don't want to use the power you've been given, then nothing will happen. I said, Lord, okay, can I do it silently? He said, no, because it's the first miracle of the crusade. He said, stretch your hand and command the heavens to lock up the rain. He said, that's what you collected from Bonke. Why are you still shaking? I said, okay, can I remove the mic and now say it? He said, no. So I took the mic. I, I won't lie. I was shaking a little. And I pointed my hand. I said, according to the word of the Lord, just like Elijah said, there will be no rain till my word. I command the heaven to shut the doors and suspend the rain. I just, in the prayer, I don't know how my hand did like this. A wind started just like that cleared up the place within minutes, within seconds, and we had bright weather. Hey, when I now saw that, I said, hey! I charge. If you see what happened that night, if you see what happened, people were, people started getting healed, all kinds of things were happening. Faith now came immediately. But I didn't know the extent of what God did. This is life in a Nugu stadium. The open part, not the membo. It was after this we now went to the membo. It was when the meeting ended, things happened so much. I entered the vehicle they were driving me. We drove out of the stadium into Ogui. Rain was falling on the whole city of Enugu and carved out the circumference of the stadium and was not falling. Ah, they drove me to the hotel. Heavy rain was falling. So I said, no, 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 no. This cannot be happening. Let me call them. I called the equipment people. What's going on? They said, there's no rain there. I said, do you know what is happening in town? You will better cover up all your speakers when you are driving. Heavy rain is falling in the whole town. Cover up your whatever when you are driving up because the whole town is on rain. I asked another person, I said, I need to be sure that this boy is not lying. Is there rain there yet? He said, No. Because I wanted to know if the rain started after I left. I said, What is this? So when I got back, I fell with all my suit. I used to wear a lot of suit. It's one guy that converted me to this. Yeah, Dominion City guy. He makes this for me, you know. But but it's nice anyway. I like African. I fell with all my suit. I didn't care. And I was crying and I was... He said, you have not seen nothing. You have not learned to use what you collected. It's just your faith that needs to be enlarged. To step into... 
So he said, next year, you're going to the member. I don't need to tell the story of that crusade. PCJ organized it. He can tell you. It's not just that the member was filled up. The whole of those spaces surrounding the stadium was filled up. Then he went to the road. The governor, the governor's wife was coming for the crusade. When she finally got in and sat down, she said, Reverend, I don't understand. It took me almost two hours to get inside the stadium with all the security details. And I assume that the whole meeting was now holding outside. Only to come inside everywhere is filled. And when I stood that night, I was singing. The Lord said, do you remember when you made that sacrifice? He said, I said, yes, sir. He said, now, I want you to trust me. There are higher levels in finance. It was one million you were struggling with move to 10 and you will move to this and you will move to this i say yes sir i won't doubt you again I'm, uh, it's also a lie i made the promise because the anointing everywhere was child when it was time to do it i started shaking again i said you will kill me how can i but you know finally i got a gift of a property they've given me a property and it's the only land I have on all the planets God created, not just planet Earth. It's just land, nothing is on it. And every year I'll go and clear the grasses and be believing that we'll build something. Where's the money to build it? So next year we came again in general. You know how when people are praying general prayer, it's always the number one thing on my list. And I'll go there, march around, oh Lord, build it. We are believing you for. And it's Pastor Nobody that was building his church. You are finished building. I think, you know, or you are still somewhere. Pastor Nobody was building. And I went. Oh, they had state governors and all those people. I can call them. State executive came, you know, and all kinds of. So we thought, oh, it will be a landslide. We have all the money. Once the f first one got up and said 100,000. I didn't know that that's how the civil service or public service work. That nobody can make a pronouncement that is higher than his principal. The deputy now went down to 50. That's when they have killed us. Every other person now, 10, 8, 5, until politicians are giving us 1,000 for church building. I fell there. I cried so much. I said, Lord, he said, I wanted to teach you a big lesson about trusting a man. You think that is how it happens. So I now said, Lord, how will this man ever build this church? It's going to cost me a couple of millions. The Lord said, you remember what we discussed? That you need to step up. Make the vow. I will provide the money. But you must make a covenant. You will deliver the money first. Deliver it. After you do, then it will be your turn to see wonders. And so... Okay, okay, I, I agree that I would do it. It's okay. Okay, now, I will now show you the money, your land. I say, what? This one is, you want to kill me? I say, it's a gift. He said, that's exactly what I'm doing. That encounter of Mount Moria. It's not that I'm trying to take your Isaac. I want to give you Israel. He says, like Jesus, he was my only son. But when I offered him, so I can have the billions of people that I have today. I'm not trying to take away Isaac from Abraham. But that sacrifice is what he has to pass. So that the promise of being father of many nations can become a reality. Do you want to move to the next level or not? I said yes, sir. But, but Lord, this general, I was in that land. And I prayed. You were even listening. And you know that this is the year I'm really believing to build it. He said, go and do it. I called Pastor Norbert. PCJ, you are aware of this. So, he said, go and redeem it. I redeemed that one first. Then I now called Pastor Norbert. I said, once you finish, come to and collect the paper of this document. He sold that land within one week. 
So when Apostle Ben tells you that sacrifice is uncomfortable, you struggle. Yeah, it's real. That, if not, why was Jesus at Gethsemane saying, Father, can this cup pass? He has been preaching, oh, the Son of Man will go, he will die. The talk is cheap. He's trying to do it. He's not saying, Father, can we find another? That's how it is with all sacrifice. So it's God that we are fooling around with. And that's why the talk is cheap. Anyway, this, a series of things happen. And don't, there are times people get instant miracles. I know people get it. God doesn't deal with me that way. How do you say, tomorrow morning you collect it? It doesn't work with me that way. A year passed, that land was still dead. It didn't rise from the dead. Second year passed. But then the third year, as giving a property that is worth 10, 10 times that one and a house, the Lord said, Whenever I ask you for something, I'm not taking anything away from you. I'm trying to move you to the next level. Sacrifice is giving something of high value, but in exchange of something of much higher value. Jesus gave his life because look at us today. Look at 2.7 billion people and he has not stopped. Remember, personally, I have not received anything, but the ministry got some mind-boggling breakthrough. I didn't care what, which one is personal, whatever. After all, in this place, if I want, I cover out two plots and build the General Vazir's house there. What is my business? Of course, the place has mountains, it has rivers, it has... Also, I, I, I went and marked the mountains. I said, that's where I will live, on top of it. Which, which one is my business? I said, what is this? I said, Lord, what is it that I didn't know? Is this what the house has been telling us and I've been arguing? Forgive me. I repented, 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 cried, cried, cried so much. I regretted ever trying to take commit suicide. I didn't know. I regretted that. Since then, you don't know why I keep asking you every year, come and pray. I say, if no other person is listening, I'm listening. I'm listening. If I tell you what we have done since then, people won't believe it. I was in a backlicky for a crusade. A woman brought a 40 year old boy, her son, deaf and dumb, sat the first night. People were healed. Cripples were walking. Blind eyes open. People gave testimonies. But for some mysterious reason, that boy was not healed. Second night, she sat there and she was sitting in the front with the boy. All kinds of miracles happened. That boy was not healed. Then the last night, the last day. I think who was pastoring there? Was he you? Pa yes. Pastor Who? The name of the boy is Emeka. This is the pastor of the church. Come on, come on, Pastor Law. Let him. He was the one that organized the crusade. Last day, last session, that lady was there again. And then they were taking an offering. And then after that service, I'll enter the flight and take off. And she did exactly this. Everything she had, she went and gave it. I got up because there is one more service tomorrow morning and I'm, I'm, I know what I'm doing. The Lord said he's going to visit individuals and he's in diverse forms. I got up. I finished preaching. I was just singing just about to share the grace. It didn't fell on me. 
And next thing, that boy was screaming and the uh, brother, uh, the two ears has popped open. The mouth is talking. That's not the first time in a Nugu Indoor Sports Stadium we had a service. You remember that particular case? I was the one preaching that service for Evangelist Hugo Wems. He was the owner of the church. I was a speaker. And uh, they had a... And it is giving time. There is a crippled man. He moves on the floor. He's a beggar in the city. And I was standing there on the stage. The basket was here. And he was coming from the back. So everybody has given. He's only one man that is still keeping us. So they got the music singing a little more. So that he can come. And he was crawling on the floor. Crawling on the floor. And he got to wear the front. The, the height of that whatever like our own whatever here. He tried on the floor to put his money. It didn't work. So he pushed. I was there watching it. He pushed up his whatever. And then he got up and started walking. Nobody. That's, nobody prayed for him. Me, I, because I wanted to stop. I, I was a little impatient and all of that. But somehow, thank God that did not happen. Now, Another service started because everywhere scattered. A service that is about to end, people were, you know, and the miracles broke out everywhere. You know, that guy after had to go and get a job to become a decent man. So I got home, I asked the Lord, what exactly is that? How did that? That's the first time I was seen. What exactly is that? I don't understand the word. He said, did you remember that in the temple, when people are giving, that I'm always standing at the basket. That's how I saw everybody casting their, and I saw when the widow put her widow's mind. You remember that? He said, altar of sacrifice is the, a place for breakthroughs. Things that you have done prayer, you've done all those, it didn't work. A man who has theories cannot argue with somebody who has results. Can 